We are now on the last main section of this course. After this video, we will have a fully rigged character, but he will still be missing some key features and he won't be ready to pass to an animator just yet. So after this, we will look into adding squash and stretch, making the rig scalable, and finally locking it down and making it safe to use. But first we need to rig the clavicles and the fingers. And thankfully, these are relatively simple compared to the last few videos. We have two main issues with the clavicles. If we raise the IK spine's shoulder control like this, you see that the shoulders follow, but the clavicles don't. So we are ending up with this extended neck. Now yes, once the stretchy spine is in and working, this will look a little better, but we still need the clavicles to move with the controls. The next problem is the clavicle's orientation. If I move the arm root control like this, it looks like the clavicle is moving with it, but it isn't. If I select the joint, you can see that the Y axis is still pointing to where the shoulder was. We need it to rotate with the control, like this. And as you can see, this has now filled out the shoulder area of the geometry too, so it looks a lot better. OK. So first, select the clavicle joints and let's get them moving with the IK and FK controls. Actually, let's find the controls first. So here is the shoulder control. And here is the top FK spine control. And now select one of the clavicle joints. Go to Constrain, Parent and open the options. Enable Maintain Offset and we only want the translations constrained. So disable rotate. We're going to work on the rotations a little differently later on. Apply that. Now repeat it for the opposite clavicle joint. So there we have our two weight values. Now we just need to blend between the two as the spine moves between IK and FK. And you should be an expert at doing this by now. Open the node editor and bring in the cog control as well as the reverse node attached to it. Now let's find the two parent constraint nodes we just added. Here they are, add those two and open them up. Now simply connect the IKFK switch attribute to the spine 3 FK weight attributes. And then output X from the reverse node to the shoulder control weight attribute. As easy as that. So let's close this. So now the clavicles move with the shoulder control. and they move to the FK controls when needed. OK, good. Now let's look at the orientations. First, let's display the rotational axes so we can see how these are being affected. So you can clearly see, as I move the control, the rotations on the clavicle joints aren't being updated. What we can do is use aim constraints again to make sure the clavicle always points towards the shoulder. But to ensure we don't get any rotational issues or the joints flipping, we will use a locator again, just like we did with the twist joints, to stabilise the constraint. So create a new locator and match it to the upper spine or spine 3's position. So it's up here now. Let's move it back behind the torso and scale it a little so we can see it. I'm also going to move it up a little, so it's more in line with the clavicle's Z axis. Around here should be fine. And let's rename this to clavicle aim. We want it to move with the torso, so parent it to the spine 3 joint. OK, that follows. Good. 
Now select the left arm root control and then the left clavicle joint. And go to Constrain, Aim and open the options. I'll reset this. So we want the aim vector to be set to Y, so the Y axis points to the root control. World up type should be changed to object up, so we can use the locator's position. And now add the locator's name, clavicle aim. The up vector also needs to match the axis which will be pointing at the locator. So this is minus Z. Let's apply that. Ah right, I put the wrong aim vector in. I set it to X. Let's undo and change this to Y. So we need a 1 here. And apply that again. OK, that's better. Y is pointing at the control now. It's important to mention that you can edit an aim constraint after you've created it, just in the attribute editor. So you don't always need to delete them and recreate them if you added in the wrong values. So what I want to do now is undo it and reset the root control because I don't want there to be too much movement when created. So I want to double check this when it's applied in a neutral pose. Let's apply this again. So you see we have some small rotation values here now. If we wanted we could adjust the locator's position to just try and remove these. But this is okay for this rig. Okay, now as we move the root control, the clavicle joint rotates to follow it. Perfect. Let's add the constraint to the opposite side now. So on this joint, the Y axis is pointing the opposite way. So we need to change the aim vector to minus one instead. And the Z axis is pointing towards the locator. So we can remove the minus from the up vector. and apply that. That works now too. And both are locked to the locator, meaning we can pose the spine and the constraints are more stable, with less risk of them flipping. Okay, that's the clavicles rigged. Now let's look at the fingers. We have all these finger controls, just like we had with the FK toes, so we need to wire these up. Unlike with the foot though, we won't be using both an IK and FK setup with the hand. All we need for this rig are simple FK controls. But these will need to be available whether we are working with an IK or an FK arm. First we need a group, so we can eventually get the controls to follow the hand. So create a new empty group, and call it hand left control group. We need this to be in the same position as the wrist, so match it to the left hand joint. There it is. Now parent it to the main root control, alongside the other controls. Actually, let's move it to the left arm group. Now move the finger controls into that group. Because we've changed the hierarchy, again we had this issue with the toes, the positions of the controls have changed, so we now have additional transform values here. So we need to update the offset parent matrix values. So select the first control of each finger, and in the attribute editor, set the matrix to identity, which will reset the offset parent matrix values and pass the values back to the main attributes. Now set the values to zero so we can see where they are. Actually, I'll move them out of the hierarchy so we can test them properly. So, reset again. And the first control should be at the world root. Okay, good, they are. So they don't have an offset baked into them, which is good. Okay, parent these back to the hand group and now match each control's position and orientation to the first joint in each finger, moving them back into position. Now we can clean the values again. 
moving them back down to the transform offset parent matrix section, or just using the script. That's better, all zeroed out. So with the toes, we also cleaned the joints too. But remember, we were working with the FK skeleton then, whereas this is the main skin skeleton, so we can't do that here. We also need to maintain the values when this is animated and then baked, so we need to use just basic constraints. So select each control, and then the joint it will drive, and simply use a parent constraint. Remember that you can press G to repeat the last command, rather than manually applying the constraint each time. OK, that's the fingers rigged. Nice and easy. What we need now is for the controls to follow the arm as it moves. At the moment, they just float in space. Again, we also need them to blend between IK and FK too. But with this setup, we don't need to worry about connecting to the IK FK switch attribute. Let's clean the control group first. Now select the hand left joint and then the hand left control group and go to constrain parent. So now the fingers will follow wherever the hand control goes or rotates to. And if we blend to FK, it moves with the arm. This is because it's simply following the position of the main skinned hand joint, rather than having to blend between an IK and an FK arm. OK, there we go. A much shorter and simpler video for you all, but we now have all the main areas of the rig built and working. What I want to do next is add another element into the rig, which could be optional depending on your character, but it's a nice addition to have, as it can make the animation look more fluid and natural, even on non-cartoon style characters. So what we are going to do is look at building in some squash and stretch, while also making sure the rig is fully scalable. 